The University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point Northern Aquaculture Demonstration Facility introduces the Walleye Video Manual, a series of instructional videos on intensive culture. Video 5, Early Life Stage Rearing, Walleye Larval System. UWSP NADF has designed two specialized larval rearing rooms for raising walleye, sagai, and sagar. The rooms consist of 50, 240 liter replicated larval tanks. Each larval tank has a replicated design based on information found in the Walleye Culture Manual and is customized based on past success from walleye larval culture at UWSP NADF. This culture manual is offered through the North Central Regional Aquaculture Center webpage for a free download. The following aspects of the larval tank are crucial for the success of the intensively reared walleye or sagai fry. These include black interior tank wall and gray tank bottom, turbid water utilizing clay, 24-hour microfeeder, surface water spray bar, directional calculated inflow, interchangeable center screen and standpipe, and controllable overhead lighting. We will go into further detail for each of these tank aspects. Tank coloration works with water turbidity to achieve good dispersal of fry throughout the water column. Turbidity is achieved by utilizing bentonite clay, which we will be discussing later. Because young fry are photopositive, they are attracted to light colors or light being reflected from the tank walls. Even with black colored tanks, without turbidity, fry will concentrate near the tank walls due to the reflection of light as shown in this video. This is referred to as a clinging behavior, which lowers the fry's ability to find feed, quickly resulting in starvation and low survival. On the other hand, utilizing a turbidity of 50 to 80 NTUs with black tank sides and a gray bottom enables light to be well dispersed and therefore allows for better distribution of fry and a higher percentage of feed acceptance. The microfeeder mounted above each tank feeds the fry continuously over a 24-hour period utilizing a mechanical time switch. As the timer switch turns, the feed platform also turns, making a full rotation in a 24-hour period. As the switch turns, it rotates the rubber flap which pushes the feed slowly off the platform and into the tank. These feeders can be made by hand for around $80 a piece. Instructions are available on the UWSP NADF webpage. Each tank setup includes a spray bar, which is basically a flex mister pointed down at the water's surface. This sprayer assists with keeping the surface water free of floating feed, oil, and other debris. This tank shows how the buildup of feed and oil at the water's surface begins to accumulate without a spray bar. The debris create a film on the surface that makes it difficult for young fry to inflate their gas bladders, which they inflate by gulping and swallowing air at the water's surface. In contrast, this tank has a spray bar. The surface is clean and clear of debris. Walleye inflate their gas bladders during a specific period of development, generally observed between 7 and 15 days in the system, temperature depending. This is a walleye fry that has fully inflated its gas bladder by day 15 in the larval system. It has been observed that fry raised in tanks without spray bars or in tanks with inadequate spray or placement of the sprayers show low gas bladder inflation. This walleye has also been reared for 15 days in the same system, but is showing no gas bladder inflation. It is assumed that failure to inflate the gas bladder within this window of opportunity is irreversible. Fish without inflated gas bladders are poor swimmers, have difficulty capturing food, and are susceptible to disease, deformities, and cannibalism shown here. The spray bar location is important for promoting a cleaner water surface and therefore a high percentage of gas bladder inflation rates in larval fry. The sprayer should be pointed directly down at the water surface and adjusted to spray a distance that reaches from the middle screen to the side of the tank wall. Directional flow in the tank is achieved with an inflow bar, which is a piece of half-inch PVC piping vertically placed in the tank with a line of small holes drilled down the side. The PVC is capped to force water through the holes. It is important to have a hole drilled in the very bottom of the pipe to ensure water movement at the bottom of the tank. 
It is helpful to mark the piping where the line of holes are drilled for ease of positioning in the tank. When connecting the pipe to the inflow water, be sure that the pipe is turned to ensure good tank rotation. The holes should be pointed about 45 degrees from the tank wall. The inflow pipe should be long enough to sit a few inches above the bottom of the tank. The pipe should connect firmly to the inflow, but also removable for cleaning and managing inflow rates. Inflow rates will depend on the size of the fry and the tank size. For the 240 liter larval tanks, UWSP NADF sets an initial inflow of 2 liters per minute for the larval fry. As the fish grow, the inflow is increased weekly. Please refer to the manual for specific flow rate information. An internal tall center screen allows for a large surface area for good water flow from the tank, which limits clogging. These screens need to be cleaned and disinfected daily due to the buildup of clay, waste, and fungus. This cleaning technique will be discussed in the next video. The screen surrounds the internal standpipe and is a few inches taller. The screen sits firmly over a 4 inch in diameter Schedule 40 PVC pipe and is pushed down to be flush with the bottom of the tank. This PVC pipe is fastened to the bottom of the tank. Half circles are cut out of the piping to assist in better bottom suction and removal of solids. Three screen sizes will be utilized as the fry grow, beginning with a 400 micron and increasing to a thousand micron and finishing with the two millimeter. It is important to have at least two screens of each size per tank. This makes for easier cleaning, disinfection, as well as replacements if screens get damaged. Refer to the UWSP NADF Intensive Culture Manual regarding further details on screen purchase and construction. Low overhead lighting is achieved with a dimmable floodlight above each tank. At this dim level, the room should appear dark and difficult to see. The lights should remain at this level at all times unless during cleanings if fry are photopositive. These 240 liter or 60 gallon tanks are stocked from 5,000 to 10,000 walleye fry. Generally, lower initial density supports larger, fewer fry, while higher densities support smaller but greater numbers of fry after a month in the system. Regardless of what initial density is utilized, UWSP NADF has recorded around 50% mortality resulting at the end of the first month. Much of this is unobserved mortality caused by cannibalism. Walleye are strongly piscivorous and will try to consume fish nearly their own size even after they are pellet trained. This cannibalistic behavior is observed at all life stages, beginning at the fry stage. When fish become large enough for handling, grading is important to limit this behavior. At the fry stage, although protocols and techniques are utilized to limit cannibalism, it will occur regardless. Therefore, tanks are stocked with the assumption of 50% mortality due to cannibalism alone. Although observed at all life stages for intensively reared pellet-trained walleye or hybrid, mortality due to cannibalism is highest at the larval and fry stage and decreases as the fish grow. Continue to the next video on Walleye Larval System Standard Operating Procedures.